What's up guys and welcome to One Take. Raised by Wolves premieres on HBO Max tomorrow, September 3rd, but I got to watch the first three episodes and today I'll be giving you my spoiler-free thoughts. I will make some references to plot details, but only those that are available in the official synopsis and in the first couple of trailers. The basic premise of the show is that two androids raise human children on a mysterious planet but they find that the burgeoning colony of humans threatens to be torn apart by religious differences. And ultimately, the androids learn that trying to control the belief system of humans can be treacherous and difficult. The series is produced by Ridley Scott, and he personally directed the first couple of episodes before handing off the reins to some other directors, including his son, Luke Scott. Anyway, I won't bury the lead any further. I've watched the first three episodes, and at least based on those first three, I am in love with this show. The way I would pitch it, if I were trying to give you the elevator pitch for why you should watch Raised by Wolves, I'd say, remember Ridley Scott's Prometheus? That was a sci-fi movie with some big ideas. It looked incredible, and watching it, you felt like you were transported to another world. But that movie was ultimately taken down by some sloppy storytelling and characters acting in unbelievable ways to drive that plot forward. Watching Raised by Wolves, I was reminded of Prometheus, but minus the sloppy storytelling and minus characters doing really silly things. So put another way, if you're looking for new great sci-fi, this show should draw you in. Before diving into detail, just a quick reminder if you're enjoying these videos to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified the next time we release a video. And I will be releasing detailed spoiler-filled reviews as the episodes are published on HBO Max, so make sure you're subscribed to keep up. So like I said before, the show looks incredible. It feels cinematic, it looks like something you could see in a movie theater, but besides that, it also has an excellent score. And to me, some of the best sci-fi is backed by a great score that gives the movie or show its own character and adds to that feeling of otherworldliness. Raised by Wolves has that in spades. And speaking of other worlds, this show truly feels like there is a whole world behind it. You can tell they've thought through the history in detail that took humanity from where we are now to where we see them in this series, and you can tell they've thought through this mysterious planet. So episode by episode, it feels like you're seeing just a small slice of what's truly out there. And that's one of the things that really draws me into the show, that sense of discovery. Organically, they're revealing more and more of this world, and I find myself excited to see more of it over the next seven episodes. Besides this other world and the mystery element, the other draw is the story itself. The show is asking some big questions, not just as themes or subtext, but it's asking them very explicitly. If you saw the second trailer, then you know that these androids are raising the children as atheists. They're trying to force that to happen. So it's an interesting science experiment. What happens when robots have children from childhood and try to force a belief system on them? That question is handled in a mature way, and the answers aren't obvious. There isn't a clear right or wrong between the believers and non-believers or between the humans and androids. So I love discovering more about the world they've created. I love watching this story unfold almost as a science experiment and an intellectual curiosity. But what about the characters? I'm not necessarily critical of the show on that point yet, but it is where I'm most worried. Based on just the first three episodes, I can't say I'm too emotionally invested in any one of the characters yet, and that hasn't been a problem because the world itself and the story itself have drawn me in so much, but the first couple of episodes move very quickly, and I doubt that momentum can continue for the remaining seven. So I imagine the focus is going to start shifting to the characters. And so far, I'm not convinced these characters can sustain that sort of focus. Now, having said that, the acting is solid pretty much across the board, and that's always a risk or a worry when you're dealing with a lot of child actors, which you are here, and even they do a pretty good job. I'll particularly give a shout out to Amanda Collin, who plays the android mother. She feels like a pretty fresh take on the robot character. She strikes a unique balance between human and not so human that I haven't really seen before. You see some of it in the trailer.
trailers, those moments of uncanny valley that just feel off. In the trailers, you're just seeing a shadow of how odd and sometimes terrifying the mother character can be. So to sum up my experience of the show so far, I'd say it's doing an incredible job of drawing me in through the introduction of this new world and just giving me a sense of discovery that the best sci-fi does. And second, it draws me in through the story. But I'm mainly following the show right now due to curiosity. I can't wait to see where it goes next. But I don't know that curiosity can be sustained for a full 10 episodes. So like I said, I think the focus will start to shift more to character. And I'm a little bit worried about that. I don't know if these characters will be enough of a draw to keep us invested when the momentum of the story starts to slow down. But hopefully that emotional investment will kick in in the next couple of episodes and keep me interested even when the story beats and the reveals start to slow down. A couple of other points I wanted to mention. Describing the show, it sounds kind of dark and dour, especially when you look at the themes it's taking on. But the show does have a surprising sense of humor. It's not a barrel of laughs, but there are some genuinely funny moments, which are usually there to serve a purpose and are usually underscored by a sense of foreboding, but I did find myself laughing a few times in these first three episodes. Also, like I mentioned, the show is pretty mysterious, both in the history that got us to the point we see in this series and in the current situation on this mysterious planet. But so far, the reveals have been coming at a pretty comfortable pace, and all the reveals feel pretty organic. I haven't felt frustrated waiting for answers, and that's always a risk with this sort of show. Anyway, I'll wrap up by saying that I was very happy with these first three episodes. If they can sustain this quality for the rest of the season, this will go down as one of the best sci-fi shows in recent history, which is great because awesome sci-fi can sometimes feel a little bit rare, so it's really good to see this. You can also just feel the creative freedom coming through on screen. It feels like there's truly a vision here. Ridley Scott and showrunner Aaron Guzikowski are clearly genuinely interested in engaging with the ideas on display in this show. They have a passion for the world they've created here. They're enjoying exploring it and that translates on screen and it just infects you as a viewer. So I can't wait to watch more of this show. Speaking of which, I will be doing detailed spoiler-filled breakdowns for every episode as they're published on HBO Max. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video or the next time we go live. Thanks for watching and see you on the next One Take.